this is a picture of when they were just basically cutting out the original face of the dam to prepare to drill into the dam, set explosives, blast it to shoot into the dam, muck it out, and then repeat that process uh, to advance this tunnel. Uh, these are the lucky fellows who get to go into the tunnel and pack the holes with explosives. Uh, they covered the opening of the tunnel with blast mats, clear the area, set off the explosive charges, and then go in and remove the material that was shot out. Each one of those blasts uh, ranged from, say, six feet uh, to about ten feet, and they moved through that methodically. Here is a drone shot looking down on one of the blasts, so you can see a little bit of the uh, the explosive material of the concrete rubble and dust coming out uh, through the um, through the opening of the tunnel. So it was a series of about 13 blasts that moved about um, almost 100 feet uh, into the tunnel. Here is just uh, a view for scale. Uh, you'll note if you can see the picture clearly that the opening it tapers down as you go into the uh, tunnel there. So at the face, the downstream face of the dam, it's about 14, 14 and a half feet in diameter. As you get into the tunnel further, it necks down to about 10 feet in diameter. And here's the reason for that. So we're gonna use that opening in the dam to drain out the reservoir starting in January. We left uh, about a 12 foot plug of concrete at the upstream face of the dam. They're going to shoot that concrete plug out, but we don't want that water to just flow through the base of the dam and come out into the river channel below the dam and cause any sort of erosion of the tow. So what you see here on the left-hand side is the tunnel that was excavated into the dam, that little bit of concrete plug that's going to be removed when we're ready to drain the reservoir. The picture on the right-hand side shows the extension of that tunnel with a long piece, several pieces actually, of 10 foot diameter steel pipe. So they opened up that tunnel at about 14 feet diameter so they can shove some of that 10 foot diameter steel pipe in, concrete that in so it's locked in place. They're going to put an extension piece on it so that the water flowing out of the reservoir will get a little bit further down river and not cause problems at the tow of, of Kaku uh, number one down. They're going to cover that steel pipe with a lot of rock and other material to hold that pipe down so that when the, uh, when the water is flowing out, it doesn't move and, and, uh, and dislodge that uh, pipe. As Ren mentioned, one of the other things that was underway at Kapko over the last weeks was dredging at the upstream face of the dam to remove much of the accumulated sediment. So Kapko number one dam has been there since 1920, over 100 years of accumulated sediment. Uh, at the upstream face of the dam. We don't want to have the contractor blast that plug out and immediately have it plugged up with sediment uh, trying to move through that uh, tunnel. So they excavated that material away from the upstream face of the dam to create an opening so that when the blast occurs to get that last little bit of concrete out of there, the water and the sediment can start to flow through freely. That material, um, they, you can see in the left-hand photo, that was the, the barge up against the face of the dam, had a big clamshell bucket that was moving the material onto a second barge. It was transported up, uh, shown in the right, uh, just up the reservoir, several hundred yards. We dropped a uh, turbidity curtain, a big sediment <coughs> curtain, off of that barge that went all the way down to the base of the reservoir. It was on a bench, it was above a bench. And the idea was to move that material up to that uh, bench location and put it inside that turbidity curtain and let it settle out uh, and so that it didn't create any uh, negative uh, water quality conditions there. <clears throat>